I'm not gonna lie, we're gonna watch this while I eat. But I know I'm not interested in this. College killer thinks he's getting away with it. Now, part of the reason why I want to watch is A. I used to watch videos like these a lot, actually. Um, like on stream and shit. But obviously it caught my interest, but I'm not gonna lie, like the guy, like look. I'm gonna be honest, this looks like somebody I used to go to school with. And I'm not saying he looks like, 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 I mean, he looks literally exactly like somebody I used to go to school with. Like, exactly like him. Now, I'm not saying this is somebody I used to, I don't, I don't know. Well, we have to see, I don't know the guy's name, so. But um, I'm also pretty sure the, the, the guy that I'm th uh, thinking of, I don't think he went to college, so. I think it's fine. But this does look exactly like this one kid that I used to go to school with. If you knew who that kid was, if like if y'all knew about him, I'm not gonna lie, y'all would not be. Surprised. I would, with all due respect to him, you know, I would not be surprised if he ended up on here. I'm just being honest. That he was he was crazy, bro. I'm not gonna lie, he was crazy. I was I was cool with him, but like, well, no, well I was, but like then he did a bunch of crazy things that I stopped being cool with him. Um, but. That is part of the reason I want to watch this, because he just look he looks exactly like this kid I used to go to school with. I don't think it's him though. So you know if I'm gonna be able to go home to Go! You aren't going anywhere. What you did last night is fucked up. You killed somebody. Just hours prior to this interrogation, 20-year-old Isaac Pence brutally stabbed someone to death and fled the scene. Yeah, so you, his name wasn't even Isaac. Over 20 college students watched as Isaac viciously took the life Dude, of their the friend, open? Charles Starner. Unfortunately for them, they were in the middle of the woods, staying in a vacation cabin in Ohio. Help was far away, and Isaac was on the run. Over the course of the next few days, this group of college kids would work with police to hunt down this evil killer together and bring justice to their friend who was senselessly killed. Bro, but I'm not gonna lie, seeing somebody get murdered right in front of you, like, bro, that probably would, would scar me for life. Isaac thinks he's getting away with it. I stabbed him on some police shit. And you think that's funny? Everyone got way too drunk, about 15 of them, all wanted to come outside and try to jump me. Shit gonna happen. Yeah, I, I woke up and my mom's like, hey, cops are out here for you. I was like, what the fuck do you mean the cops are here for me? Wait, he doesn't, he doesn't even remember? On the night of April 22nd, 2023, 23-year-old Dalton Flagg was celebrating his birthday with friends and family at a rented cabin in Hawking County, Ohio. But what should have been the perfect night would quickly turn out to be a tragedy. This is the CCTV footage outside the house. After a long night of drinking, an altercation ensues between a group of teens. Isaac stood in the midst of the argument with his girlfriend Sabra watching from afar. After a few Gotta seconds of back house. and forth, Isaac snaps, throwing a punch into the crowd. This made them push Isaac back into a car where he would strike the crowd again before setting off towards his own vehicle. However, moments later, the fist fight quickly turned into a gruesome scene. Outside of the camera's view, Isaac ran back to his car to grab something. But before he could exit his car again, he was quickly cornered by multiple people trying to force him to leave. That's when Isaac pulled out his knife and attacked. Charles Starner, the college student pushing on Isaac's car door, went on to receive six brutal stab wounds, struck in the neck and the back. Panic set in as everyone realized the horrifying scene unfolding in front of them. One of Charles's friends quickly grabbed him and pulled him away from the vicious attack. Oh Isaac God. would then quickly get inside his car and drive off into the woods with his girlfriend, Sabra. The killer, Isaac... His girlfriend went with him? You just watched your boyfriend murder somebody and you just hopped in the whip with him? Isaac was now on Are the you loose crazy? and would spend the following hours attempting to cover his tracks. Charlie, on the other hand, the student he just stabbed, limped over to his friends, fading in and out of consciousness. Charlie's oh friend God. Hannah was an EMS student, but the injuries were too brutal for her to keep him alive. 
By the time paramedics arrived on scene, it was already too late, and Charlie would pass away. Officers at this point have no idea what led to Charlie's death. Anyone at the crime scene could be a potential killer, so they immediately rally everyone together looking for outliers. Alright, if you want to slide him over so we can, I can move my car. Okay, right. That is Detective Sumner right there. She's going to start asking questions. Nice before. to meet you. Top of the morning. <laughs> yeah, great night. Who saw what happened? I saw everything that happened. I don't Why don't you think stand over here? I'm not going to lie. I know they're not guilty. But they look weirdly calm for a bunch of group, for a group of kids who just watch somebody. I mean, I know they're college because they're, they're basically grown, like, adults. But, like, for a group of kids who just watch their friend get murdered in front of them, they are weirdly, like, really calm about it. Like, you would think they'd be, like, freaking out, crying. Like, they seem very calm. Like, this is, like, normal. I don't know. It's kind of weird. You saw what happened to you? Stay separate, but stand over here. Anyone else? The two people who just stepped forward are Hannah and James, and they are the only two who are entirely drenched in blood. Do you have a phone? Um, I believe it's okay. right to the side of the forearm. Just stand where you're at. Like, you see how calm they be? Okay, I think all that. Any blood on your pants or shoes? Bro. We're probably gonna take your hoodie. James's blood stains appear to be those of a witness, since they were smooth and smeared. If he was the one who stabbed Charlie, the blood patterns would likely be sharp and scattered across the body. As for Hannah, all of her arms were covered in blood, indicating that she was likely trying to stop Charlie from bleeding out by applying pressure. Regardless, it's clear the two were eyewitnesses to Charlie's murder, so Detective Summers and her counterpart would immediately conduct an interview with both James and Hannah to get a clear recollection of events. Yep, yep, yep. Alright, that's a body cam sitting up there on the dash. Alright, tell me what you saw. What? Hold on, five shit. <laughs> Salutations. <laughs> My fault. Happened what led up to all these events? So, I had been inside the house once you go in once you go in and you go to the right there's like the whole kitchen family room blah 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 well uh there's this one kid the whole party that because he knew i had a background in ems was calling me firefighter 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 and so i showed him some pictures from like different like fires i'd been on and then somebody got mad at him for talking to me, which wasn't even any guy that I really knew. Well, so they started fist fighting inside. Ooh, like right a protect the hus ass nigga. Okay, okay. In the doorway once you go into the right. And uh the kid Wait, so you telling me well, a bunch of kids who barely even know each other? That were just all at this cabin together for somebody's birthday? But they barely knew each other? Maybe this story a little deeper than we thought. Hold on. It's covered in blood. Um, Jimmy. Like, how Jimmy did all these kids get out here if they the didn't even know each other? And for real. I was like, I don't like this. It's like, I mean, everybody was trying to tear it up and stuff. Like, they were still wrestling. They got out into this main corridor right here in front of the door. But I was still sitting like at the kitchen table, so uh, I could kind of hear what was going on. Hmm. But once again, I didn't want to get on a fire. Well, I heard somebody say "gun," and that's when I was like, I'm definitely gonna stay in here. They're out here fighting, like, right in front of my truck, the, the Toyota 4Runner. <laughs> and uh, Jimmy, the kid that's covered in blood, was trying to separate them. And I think what happened is he pulled over to a center console, pulled a knife out, and when he did, he went straight for the neck. That's how he got the neck wound. For his back, for his back again, and he got him again in the back. I, I want to say it was like five stab wounds, four or five stab wounds. Okay, wait, to be fair, she is EMS, so she is technically supposed to, like, be calm in these situations, but, like, she EMS in training. Like, you ain't an EMS for real, for real yet. Like, But, I mean, he did... Like, I mean, it was very fast, very vigorous. Oh, the moves Hannah describes are not supposed to be used to protect yourself from the attacker, but to kill them. One poke or a stab might be enough to deter the attacker, but four or five of them to vital parts of the victim's body is a clear indication that Isaac intended to kill. 
So kind of explain this to me a little bit. So they were fighting, I guess, fist fighting over here on this side? Yeah, they were right, fighting on this side. Okay. Stabbing, though. And then what happened? That guy, I think his name's Isaac. He got up, back. came over to his car, which was right where the... Got up, so he got knocked down. People are broken. I think his name is Isaac. Again, why are y'all just all in this cabin with a bunch of people y'all don't know? I don't know. I, I was standing on the porch at that time. He's over like, here on the porch. Who party is this? Okay. But I just saw them all go down there. He was parked right next to the forerunner. So he went to get in his car, and that's when everything happened. But I saw him start stabbing Charlie, so that's when I kicked his door to kind of stump him. And then I pulled Charlie away and then onto the other side, and that's when I was, we were all just holding him. Did he know he had a knife at that point, you think? No, nobody knew. Okay. And then after that, I like I just kept my arm around Charlie to hold pressure on all of his wounds, and then that's why there's blood from this side of the forerunner over. Because after I drug him there, that's where I sat the whole time until you guys got here. It just I trust my gut feeling, and tonight was just not right, and that was terrifying. Well, I understand. It was just an absolute show, and I came out onto the porch to make sure. Like I was honestly kind of scared I was going to get shot. Because they had said, you know, there might be a gun. But I wanted to be here in case somebody got hurt. And Isaac had called over the phone and threatened to come back and finish the job, further confirming to police oh, that this was not an act of self-defense. While Jimmy and Hannah's interviews provide detectives with a clear picture of what led to the stabbings, both witnesses had never met Isaac before. However, police still know nothing about the actual so person who committed this murder. So Detective Summers decides to bring in Dalton, the party's host, who also happens to be Sabra's brother, and he would reveal oh. some twisted information crucial to solving this case. So walk me through, how long have you guys been here? Um, we've been here for his weekend. girlfriend's brother's um, party. Yeah, we, we, we got here Friday, uh, like 4 p.m., I think it was. Um, and literally, like, all these people, I was making sure everybody had, like, safe rides home. I didn't want people driving. Like, if you're driving, like, there's plenty of room to stay. You all, everybody can stay. And I was making sure everyone was leaving. And Isaac Pence, the one that he was belligerent, and I said, dude, I was like, you have a safe ride to go home. Just leave, leave. There's no, like, just, no, there's no reason for anything. You're, like, everybody's going home. Half the people are sleeping, trying to go to bed. Like, I was in the, in the, when this all, like, went down, I was trying, I was telling everybody to get, like, get him out. Like, just get him out of here. Tell him to leave. Get him out of here. And then start, they all start freaking out. He stabbed, he stabbed someone. I was like, like, we all were freaking out, like. I was like, I, I'm so much in shock. Like, I did not know what to do. I was up in there, and uh, Hannah and Jimmy, they were all helping, like holding, like on him. I was like, just keep pressure on him. Like, I, like, I'm, I, I don't know what to do. Like, and who they is, were all who calling is him. him? Who's him? When you're saying that they were holding pressure on him, who Chuck, is the one that got stabbed? Charlie, Star, Hannah, and Jimmy. They were holding pressure on him after, like, they were like, he, he stabbed him. He stabbed him. Uh, like, not asking the Isaac right question. The car Shoddy, after him, uh, immediately. It sped off okay. up through here. Okay. And who was Isaac with? Who did he sleep with? He, my sister, Sabra Oh, geez. Isaac's had issues in the past. He's put his hands on my sister, and he's just literally went to jail three months ago for putting his hands on my mom. Yo. Isaac Pence was someone that should never have. Nah, bro. Like, what's going on, gang? You ain't ever decide, like, yo, let me, maybe let me fight him? Like, come on, bro. Like, protect your sister and your mom? have been at this party in the first place. He already had a history of being violent, as Dalton explained. And to make matters worse, he was deadbeat drunk. Flailing around, assaulting everyone that came into view, it was only a matter of time before someone got seriously hurt. It just so happened that Dalton telling Isaac to leave made him explode. More importantly, Dalton explained that Isaac went to prison for assaulting his mother. This is very important information, as it could prove in court that Isaac had pre-existing tendencies of assault. Detective Summers plans to speak to Dalton's mother face to face, but before she's able to do so, she receives disturbing information that changes the case completely. They went to the hotel room where Saber's mom is staying. She told him to get their shit and get out. And he, I don't know. She doesn't know if he's coming back to finish what he started or what. Oh, nice. Cool. Yeah, I hope he does. I'll head up to the top. All right, good luck. Good luck.
With these claims in mind, police will have everyone evacuate the premises and lock down the cabin. Fortunately, Isaac would never show, and the hunt for Isaac Pence would go cold for the night. Um, I'm in ten angles. Let's see. Where's the saber of mom? Detective Randolph, okay. We just need a statement from you about what happened last night. Okay. I know. I was the son was supposed to be at work at six o'clock this morning. I was woke up at three AM by my daughter calling me on the phone. She was hard to understand. I could tell she was intoxicated. And she was very hard for me to understand what she was saying. Um I could I knew there was a fight. She said a fight was breaking out. Um, she said, I've lost my glass. I don't have my glasses. I don't have my purse. I don't have a shoe. I was trampled on. Dalton and Isaac. Dalton is my son. Isaac is. They. Not been bad blood, but. He's, Isaac's not treated Saber very well. Um, I've had. We had a court case not too long ago where he threw me across the room. So Dalton's just. Protective of his sister, his sister, worried for her safety, really. Um, so he told her yesterday he's not to come if he's been drinking. Well, when he got out of the car, he had an he already had an empty container on him. And Don said he tried to get him to leave all night several times. He tried to get him to leave, and Isaac wouldn't leave. Okay. So this is what she told you on the phone, mm -hmm. correct? Okay. Yeah. And then I said, Saber, where are you going right now? Where are you? Are you? She said, it, she first told me they were at Isaac's house. I said, Sabra, okay, but I could hear this in the background, I could hear Isaac talking to somebody, and she was still sitting in the car, and I said, if you're at your house, if you guys are at your house, why are you still sitting in the car? She was like, well, I don't know where we are. I said, Sabra, ask Isaac where you are. So she asked Isaac where they were. Isaac said, it's okay, I stopped at a buddy's house. And um, I said, okay, I don't know what buddy, I know they said something on ch chicken coop road. But then they left there and came to the room. They were in my room, maybe 20 minutes, and I told Isaac he needed to leave. Okay. He said, he was calm when I was talking to Saber on the phone. Mm -hmm. Much different person when he was there at the room. He said, well, once I go to my house and get what I need, I'm going back out there. I don't know what he was meaning, but he was going out there to finish, finish something off. What time was that? That was, I mean, they left my room at 19 till 5. 5 a.m.? Yes. Because okay. then I called my mom because I said, obviously, I don't know what's going on. It's, I can't, I, I'm not, I, I'm not going to work today. And I called McDonald's, I'm manager of McDonald's, and I called him and said, I don't really know what's going on. This is all I know, but I know my kid, I don't know. I just feel like something's, I'm not being told everything. And. I just, I, I still can't believe this. It's frankly terrifying that despite the fact that Sabre just watched her boyfriend stab someone to death, all she cares about is getting her belongings back before work the next day. This ignorance yeah, and like, complete disregard for their I'm crimes so is something that both Isaac and Sabre should be held accountable for. Like, she just didn't care? She just Police would go on to get written go? statements from everyone at the house that night, adding to the pile of evidence against Isaac. However, the next day, Hannah and James would show up to the station to provide police with the most damning evidence they've received yet. Obviously, a lot was going on yesterday. Yeah. Um, so, I uh, remember how I said I had been on the porch? Mm -hmm. Well, I think I'm, well, I flew off the porch so fast and I ended up on the hood of my truck because I thought Isaac was going to hit my car. Okay. So I started recording a video in the circumstance that he hit my car. Okay. And I captured the entire stabbing. Um, I captured um, oh, no. Sabra, the female that was in the passenger seat. You can see her reach in the back seat with her flashlight on her phone on. Um, so. There she's Sabra driving the second right back. I can't even tell what's going on. And then that's uh, 
and drag the amber away. Honestly, if you put the brightness on the video up, we might be able to see a little bit better. So, I know. I'm just going so fast. But it's him standing up in the door up there. They're safe for getting into the back seat. She grabs something and she tosses it onto his seat. Tom tosses what? Something from the back seat onto his car seat. The Isaac's on. So Isaac's right there in the middle. Like he, does he toss the knife, knife to him? He's the one standing up there. That's his arm yelling to him. Then he's stabbed right there. And that's Jimmy grabbing him and pulling him back. Unfortunately, we have to censor the evidence due to YouTube's guidelines, but an uncensored version, along with the <laughs> extended three-hour cut of the video, Yo, is available is on our Patreon linked in the description. This video is a crucial step in proving Isaac guilty, as it shows clearly that Isaac did in fact stab Charlie. Additionally, Saber seems to hand something over to Isaac right before the stabbing occurs, meaning she could have potentially given Isaac the knife used to kill Charlie. That's what I'm with thinking. this, police have more than enough evidence to arrest Isaac and Sabra. This would be an easy task, as police were able to ping Sabra's phone location to Isaac's house. They would be detained shortly thereafter. However, during the investigation, they also discovered something peculiar. By tracing the car's movements found at Isaac's house, officers realized that Sabra and Isaac visited two other locations before arriving at their own home. The first was the house of Isaac's friend, Justin Sloan. At approximately 3 a.m., just minutes after the stabbing, CCTV cameras captured Sabra and Isaac stopping at the home. Maybe bro didn't know. Maybe Why didn't exactly know, like... they stopped would soon unravel itself as officers call Justin. <coughs> Maybe bro didn't know. Hello? Hello, is this Justin? Yeah. Hi, Justin. This is Detective McKnight, Hawking County Sheriff's Office. I appreciate you talking to uh, our Captain uh, Robinson earlier, um, but I've just got a couple follow-up questions real quick. Okay. So the questions that I have is, do you know Saber? Uh, yes, because she knew my little brother and stuff. That's how I met her. Uh, but this is the first time she's been to your house? Uh, this current house that I live in, yes. Normally we all just kind of meet at our friend's house. Um, was she present during the discussions when he was, when Isaac was telling you what was happening, what happened last night? Yes, sir. Okay. Was she present oh, when she hit the knives? Uh, she was in my garage on the phone with her mother. And he left the garage to go, did he say he was going to go do that? Yeah, I couldn't really tell him no because I didn't know what was going on. I had no idea if it was true or not. Okay. Do you have any idea who told the police that he was going to come back and finish the job? I don't think. Oh, I didn't hear him say stuff like that when he was drunk and freaking out at my house, though. It might even be on camera, but I don't know. He did say stuff like that at your house? Kind of. It was more of like he just wanted to go back and beat up the other people that were trying to jump him. <clears throat> Okay, all right. The all killer right. couple hid two knives at Justin's home. Evidently, the two were panicking. With a fresh kill on their hands, so they, they just made bro an accomplice by throwing the murder weapon at his crib. Yo. L man. They didn't know what to do and stashed the knives L at Justin's Mans. home without him knowing. Once Justin refuses to give them shelter, Isaac and Sabra make a second stop, Sabra's mother's hotel room. It's <coughs> obvious the two are panicking. Isaac L knew Mans. what he did could get him in serious trouble, so instead of working with the police to prove his innocence, he hid the murder weapons and ran. How the evidence points to innocence? Isaac as a clear killer who murdered an innocent college student for no reason. With little to no evidence proving this statement to be wrong, detectives decide it's time to conduct their first formal interrogation with Isaac. The goal of this oh, interrogation is to get Isaac to admit to the murder, and then slowly break his attempt at claiming self-defense until he has nothing left other than to admit his evil actions. Ooh, he could just say it was self-defense, technically. Why don't you tell me a little bit about, about yourself? Um, you live on Pickerington Road? Mm -hmm. Okay, how long have you lived there? Um, <coughs> about six, seven years now. Okay. All right. Um, who do you live there with? Uh, my mom, my stepdad. Okay. Um, I got a little brother, a little sister. Okay. Like, I'm not lying. right here, he does not look like the person I went to school with. Right here, like in this angle. But at the start, like, with the, I think it's the angle. It's the angle. My then, mom, my Sabra mom. and my two kids. Okay. Your you kids? Oh, my fiance. Okay. Fiance? And how old are your children? One is uh, one, 
and one is four months. Okay. Get them away On the him. surface, it might look like Isaac is a proud father, no. but he's hiding Get more than a few skeletons in his him. closet. When officers arrived to arrest him, his home's condition was beyond deplorable. The pungent smell of ammonia, likely accumulated from urine, filled up every single corner of the home. But that wasn't even the worst part. Isaac was a well-known abuser, and in his girlfriend's mother's words, Sabra was his biggest victim. This meant that the children he tries to speak so dearly about were the same ones who, according to people close to Isaac, had to live in a house that stunk of urine, all the while seeing their mother be abused on the regular. To many, it might seem that Isaac's complete disregard and ignorance of anyone but himself is what landed him here in the first place. Like, Yet, yeah, in with his people, eyes, bro? he seems to think that he's done nothing wrong. In fact, as the interview continues, it's almost as if he sees himself as the victim. So, I don't like you guys came up here for a birthday party, is that correct? Yeah. So whose birthday was it? Um, it was her brother's birthday. Um, me and her brother never got along. Okay. I was sitting there the whole time. I was like, I know this is a bad idea, but I want to make her happy. So I was like, you know, I will try to put my pride aside. Let's go ahead and go. Okay. We were there. Everything was good. It was completely When did you fun. get there? Um, as of around 8, I think 8.30. Well, Nine. everything was completely fine. And we're having a good time. Um, she ended up having a panic attack because she wanted to get into a hot tub and she is way too drunk and she's, oh, he's going to be mad if I get in a hot tub. And I was like, hey, you're fine. Go get in a hot tub. She's like, well, there's other dudes in there. I was like, listen, I'm not getting in a hot tub because I'm wearing work shorts or work pants, work shirt. I'm not getting in a hot tub. I was like, you want to get in there? Go ahead. Notice how Isaac completely leaves out the facts that he, too, was belligerently drunk. Pay attention to how Isaac cleverly leaves out details that may diminish his story. She gets in there, everything's fine. Well, later on that night, she's outside, and we're all standing out in the hallway. She's outside, so... Yeah, she's out on the patio. Who's she? Uh, Sarah. Okay. Um, but then, it was me, her brother, and I think... Like two other guys. All right, what's your brother's name? Uh, Dalton. Dalton, okay. Uh, I don't know the other two guys, but we were all standing right here in the hallway, and someone ended up like, pushing me. Right. So I pushed him back. Well, Dalton thought that I pushed his uh, girlfriend, Ariza. And so he got all pissed off. That's when everyone tried to jump me. Well, I kind of know what I'm doing a little bit, so I started throwing them to the side, and that's when I was like, you know, I'm not trying to f anybody, so just toss them to the side, I got in my car. I was telling Sabre, I was like, hey, if you want to go, then we're going. Well, they came and they got in the passenger car, um, and they took her sunglasses, or no, her actual glasses, and her purse out, trying to keep her to just stay there. So, oh, well, you're going to stay here. And I was like, well, with everything going on, like, I'm going to leave. Right, because you, you said you just want to leave? Yeah, it was <laughs> from 10 to 15 guys. Okay. And they all decided they were going to try to fight me. Well, then this one comes up to my car door, came up and he was kicking my car. I mean, once they start sitting there trying to bust the glass to get to me, that's when I pulled out a knife. I was like, hey, you need to back up. And they didn't want to. No, they ended up opening my car door. What right. car door? My driver's side car door. They did? Okay. Yeah. It was two to three guys were sitting there, and they were just yanking on I was trying to hold it as good as I could, and it was three guys sitting there pulling on it. I was like, I'm not going to let my door break. I was like, hey, you guys need to back up. Like, this is not going down right here. Okay. And they didn't want to listen. So I was like, listen. And just start poking out a little bit. Immediately, Isaac's story contradicts all of the witness statements thus far. Isaac claims he was the one trying to leave the party, while everyone else claims they were trying to get Isaac to leave. Unfortunately for Isaac, the phone recording, CCTV footage, and mountains of other evidence go directly against what he's saying. But for now, 
detectives will let Isaac create a detailed narrative without confrontation so that they can use it against him in later interrogations. Like, I didn't try to do it to physically hurt anybody really bad, but I did it just to like poke, like, hey, I have a knife, calm down. Well, where, where did you get the knife? Oh, it was in my car. Okay. Um, I use it for work. Okay. Because doing construction. Okay. We used to cut plastic and everything. Okay. They wouldn't right. stop. They just kept going. So That's why the I tried to stab the one guy in the arm just so they would get him. But <coughs> as soon as I stabbed him in the arm, they left. The other two guys took off completely. Okay. And that's when Saber got in the car and I took off. I left, left out the other side. I safe. I called my mom. I was like, hey, I should not be driving right now. And a bunch of shit has popped off. I was like, I need to figure out something. I got to go somewhere. But I don't need to be driving. So you stabbed the guy in the arm one time? I think it was twice. Twice? Sure wasn't more than that? I don't think so. Okay. So when you left and you said you called mom, right? Um, so did she come get you from there? Uh, she wasn't able to. Gotcha. So did, did you go, where'd you go after that? I went straight home. Isaac is blatantly making lie after lie. Every lie he makes during this interrogation will only come back to haunt him once he's presented with factual evidence. The, the knife, where, what's its location? Where is it? Um, it should still be in my car. should be in the car. But like, yeah, you threw so, it at your friend's house. If though. I didn't drop it. Gotcha. So it, it's either in the car or it's at their house. Gotcha. Okay. Detectives would wrap this Not interrogation either. up quickly as they got exactly what he needed. Isaac doubled mm -hmm. down on his claims of self-defense and lied through his teeth in order to do so. Now that they have these statements on record, Isaac is going to have a really hard time proving his innocence once he's confronted. But for now, police have another issue to address. It's still unclear what Saber's role was in the murder. The phone yeah, recording could indicate that she handed Isaac the knife, so she could be equally as guilty for the crime as Isaac is. However, their one priority is to convict Isaac but and she can just She can just say no and she'll be fine, right? If she just says, like, no, I didn't hand him anything. Like, she can just make up, like, she put, like, his phone right there or something. Drag the truth of what happened be, that night. So they sit knows. Saber down for her one and only interrogation, with plans to slowly build the pressure until she breaks down and confesses everything. Uh, or she's just gonna confess what she did. Let's All right. Out, say, okay. All right. Uh, what time did you get so I I was at work and then I got off at seven. Um, I asked for around seven thirty. Um, I had a few people coming in town really late, so I didn't get out until about seven thirty. I went home. Um, he was asleep when I got there. Isaac was. So I woke him up. And I was like, "Do you still want to go?" He's like, "Yeah, let's do it. You know, we'll just go for a few hours because I have. I'm supposed to open today." Well. Um, once we got there, my mom was like, yeah, I want to drink with you. Like, just stay, and then we'll make sure you're up in the morning. I just decided to sit on the couch because I was like, I know i got to get up in the morning. You know, i got to go to work. I'm not, I don't want to get too, like, wasted. So I was just sitting on the couch, and they're still having a good time. Isaac's having a good time. Nice and couch. all of a sudden, I hear this big, like, you know, arguing. And I was like, oh, my gosh, please tell me it's not with Isaac. I go out, and I hear, like, a bunch of different stories. I, Isaac and a few other people are saying that he accidentally pushed Horizon, which is my brother's girlfriend. Then my brother's sitting here saying he intentionally pushed her. I don't think he intentionally pushed her. Pushed her. He's not the type of person. He's not violent, especially with girls. He because his mom was abused by his dad, so he knows what it's like. And he's seen his mom goes through all of that, so I know he's not the type, that type of person. Uh, it's awfully odd that Saber describes Isaac as non-violent and doubles down on not him not girls. being the aggressor the entire night, because all of the previous witnesses stated otherwise. Isaac has had a thorough history of abuse, and everyone besides Saber clearly remembers him being the aggressor the entire night. There is a good chance that the reason why Saber is defending Isaac is a far more deep-rooted issue. Trauma bonding occurs when an individual suffers 
suffers from cycles of abuse, followed by positive reinforcement. This causes the victim to develop a strong emotional attachment to the abuser, which can result in a rationalization of the abuser's behavior. Considering the fact that Isaac has abused Saber's mom, one might question if he's really the saint Saber makes him out to be in their relationship. But for now, all that Saber wants is to defend Isaac, because to her, it doesn't matter if he's a murderer. And they're sitting here arguing. I'm trying to talk Love to Isaac make you to do calm strange down. Things, because I'm like one of the only people that calm down. I'm like, okay, let's just, you know, if anything, let's just go in your car, sit for like a couple hours, and then we can go home. Then they followed us outside. It was like 10 guys, um, all of my brother's friends. And this guy, I think his name is Clay. I don't want to be wrong. He goes, are you really starting problems again? And I think he might have thought maybe when I had my panic attack that Isaac was starting some sort of drama. But he pushed Isaac. Isaac went flying back into a car. I tried to intervene and just try to get Isaac away because I didn't want to see my brother fight Isaac mm -hmm. and any of that to happen. They end up like back behind Isaac's car. They end up going down that hill. I'm following them, trying to, you know, break it up. Somehow I fall and they're like trampling all over me. I have a big bruise on my knee and Isaac, um, he got in the car and he goes, Sabre, come on, come on, come on. I didn't even know someone got stabbed until way after we left. And Isaac was like, I think I stabbed that dude. I think I stabbed him. I was like, I was like, oh my God. Isaac was like, you literally ran away. Like, that's not what you should do. And I think we stopped at his friend's house because his friends lived, lived shortly down the street. He was flipping out because he was like, you know, he's like, oh my God, I don't want to get in trouble. I don't want to get in trouble. Then he ended up falling asleep. So I had an alarm at seven, so I could try and wake up and get time to call someone and see if they were up at that time. And then at that time, that's when I hear pounding on our front door. And I walk out and Isaac's mom um, was like, um, Isaac, you, Isaac needs to get out of here. There's a bunch of cops out here. Um, drawing their weapons, he's gotta go out. It's clear Sabra doesn't intend on cracking. So detectives decide Maybe. it's time to put the pressure on Sabra and get her to confess. Maybe she didn't do anything. Anything else that you forgot Maybe to tell us or didn't mention? Not that I know of. Call him. Or what do you know, Justin? Um, I know him not like really well. I just know that him and I that were friends for a couple of years. How long were you at the house talking to him today with Isaac? <clears throat> Isaac. Like five minutes. Five to ten minutes. Only five to ten minutes. Mm -hmm. as, as far as I know, like, I mean, I went in the city, then we were out there for a little bit, and then we left. I'm sure that somebody's already kind of explained things to you, right? So, mother to mother, you love your children, right? Yes, very much. Okay, and you want to see your kids again someday, yeah. right? Yeah. Because today, somebody's actions made it so a mother lost her son, a father lost his son, somebody lost their boyfriend, okay? Mm -hmm. Several friends lost another friend who bled out at the hands of someone that you care about and you know something. I, I, I really, I don't. You I, were there. Yeah, but I didn't, I didn't know he got stabbed. I didn't, I didn't know that until after he, we left. If you're trying to protect this man, not, you're going to go down as an accomplice for murder. I'm not, I promise. I, you know something. I, I got she, knocked what down if, what if she and I was on the floor what if she, or on the ground and then I got up and I didn't I didn't see anyone on the floor. I didn't see anyone else on the floor. I swear I'm okay. not trying to protect him so at all. So what did he say after he stabbed him? Because you guys drove away together. He had to have said something. He didn't. He really didn't. He said, um, I don't even think he said anything. He just got in the car. I got in the car. And then we left, and then shortly after that, he said that he stopped something. I'm going to tell you that I talked to his parents, and they said that he's an explosive, angry, violent drunk. He is, and I, I'll, I, he, he is. He's never been, like, like aggressive to me. Um, he just, he gets aggressive, and he'll, like, he punches back when she'll, he, he does stupid things when he's drunk. I'll be the first to admit that. That's right. He died. He's dead. He's gone. I know. I know. Okay. That breaks my So. <laughs> so your honesty today is imperative about what happened. Your honesty today is the is the paramount of what we need done. Okay. You're not telling us. 
You're hiding some stuff back because you're protecting me. All right, now listen to me. Mm. I spoke to your mother on the phone. So did I. Okay. You know he's violent <laughs> against women, correct? He's been violent before against women, correct? He was violent against your own mama. Talking about Isaac. He, so yes, he did push my mom. Huh? Um, he did what? He pushed my mom. Pushed your mom? Um, because he went to court for it. Um, she said going across she the She punched room. him first, and then she, he pushed her. So I will say that, yes, but he has never laid a hand on me. He's never done anything like that. You told but me he, earlier that you would never do that to a woman, correct? I totally forgot about my mom. I'm so sorry. I, How? It's your mom. How can you forget about your mom? You're trying to protect him. I'm not. Okay. I'm going to tell you right now that my specialty is... Domestic How violence, sexual assault, and crimes against children. And the living conditions that your children are in are a crime. A deplorable, sickening crime. I'm 35 years old and I could barely breathe in that house. Oh, yeah. There's yeah. dog feces everywhere. There, the ammonia in that house is horrible. Yeah. We've made a referral to have your children emergency room. I'm gonna tell you that. I'm gonna tell you, you know how I know you're full of shit? You went to your mom's, you went to Justin's, all before you went back to the house. I talked to your mom. I did go to my mom's. I, I totally forgot. I am so sorry. Are you forgetting because you were drunk? Or are you forgetting because you were high? No, no, no. You're forgetting because she doesn't want to tell us the truth. Mm. The only thing I can have, I can say about you right now, is either she was lying, she's a mm -hmm. or she was scared, but she finally told us the truth. I was scared. Okay. You knew that he threw the knives at Justin's house, correct? Yes, and I apologize. I was, I was scared. Who had the gun at the party? I, and I'm being honest to God, I didn't see a gun. I didn't know who had a gun. I know my brother has okay. a gun registered in his name. Did your brother have a gun? I don't know. I didn't see one. Okay. What okay. did you see about the stabbing? Um, I didn't see, it, and I'm being completely truthful on everything. I didn't see anyone get stabbed. I didn't see anyone fall to the floor. I didn't see anything. This is when I was, I think this, all of this stabbing happened when I was on the ground. Well, is there anything else that you think that we should know about? You're like, maybe she really didn't do nothing. Not she guilty? Is there anything oh. that you want the prosecutor to know? Because maybe now she didn't to make your case. She didn't even, she didn't you feel nothing. that you have one. Unfortunately, it doesn't seem like Sabra is going to crack anytime soon. However, her lying is just as bad as Isaac's, so convincing her shouldn't be much of a challenge. Additionally, her cathartic behavior only strengthened the case against Isaac, as she revealed that they did in fact hide the knives at Justin's home, giving detectives another lie to confront Isaac with. So once and for all, using all the evidence they've collected for the last several days, detectives sit Isaac down for a final interrogation. We're going to read Miranda as you since we've had a break in between. Uh, do you know what your Miranda rights are? Okay, I'm going to read them to you. After reading Isaac his rights, he would recount everything that happened the night of the murder. We've heard his story multiple times now, so I'll fast forward through that portion of the interrogation. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. So, I'm going to tell you the only thing you have left in this world is your integrity. You know what integrity is? Yeah, your honesty. Hi, bro. That and I'm going to tell you that I have found about 40 loopholes already in your story. Mm. And I know the truth. I'm not going to ask you a question I already don't have the answer to. Okay, that would make me a horrible detective. Been here since 3.30 this morning. The last Damn. thing I want is your bullshit. 3.30 okay? a.m. I am no, giving looks, you honesty and I'm giving you the opportunity to come clean. He does look good. Okay. If I go to the prosecutor and say he gave me a line of crap, you know what they're going to do? They're going to throw the book at you come court time. If I go to the prosecutor and I say, hey, this is a guy who made mistakes because we all make mistakes. We do it every single day. I'm not a perfect person. Dave's not a perfect person. You don't murder people every single day. That's not like, that's a different type of mistake. But I think that's, that's like, you made a lot of mistakes to lead up to like that one big ass mistake. Like, that's just not like a little mistake that you do. Like, he... He, he murdered somebody. Like, that's, that's a little different. We've that's a little... And seen some fucked up that's, things. That's not okay? the same. That's what not the same. What you did last night is fucked up. You killed somebody. Like, what the fuck? He's dead. And then died. Yeah, he died at 8.31 this morning. The world lost a father. He leaves behind a nine-and-a-half-month-old son named Jet. Okay? He was a dead 
Somebody lost their son this morning. A mother and father lost oh their son. Gosh, was, a girlfriend a lost her boyfriend thing. that she held compression on for several minutes waiting for a medic to get there to try and save his life. Oh he died at Grant God. this morning and you're facing murder charges. He did because you didn't stab him twice. You stabbed him multiple times. Way more than twice. It was more and than I've twice. interviewed probably 15 or 16 people today that have painted a pretty gruesome picture involving you. This is your chance to be honest. There is a whole video I've been like. They have you in 4 You get one shot at this, and one shot only. They do have I've you in 4K, gang. I know you are a very violent, explosive person. I know you drink almost every weekend. You left her in the care and custody of your two children, Draco and Waylon, who are 13 months and 4 months old. You named your kid Draco? <laughs> Yo, he did it, bro. Yeah, he did it, bro. <laughs> Yo, he did it, bro. Just lock his ass up now. I'm not gonna lie. Give that nigga the death penalty. Yo, put that nigga on death row. I appreciate the follow, my hottie. I appreciate the follow. Put that nigga on death row. He named his kid Draco? Nigga think this shit Harry Potter? Fuck no, bro. Like, what are we interrogating this nigga for? The fuck? Very violent. Nigga, lock his person. ass up. I know you drink almost every weekend. <laughs> that's all you, you had to tell me. Shit, that's all you had to tell me, nigga. The fuck? He named this kid Draco willingly? Yeah, send him to jail. So you have your two what children, the fuck? Draco and Waylon, who are 13 months and four months old. A 13 month bedroom, year old baby I've called Draco? You lost. I had a very me, deep bro. conversation with your girlfriend, you me, your girlfriend's bro. mother, and everyone that was at that <laughs> cabin. You get one shot at this. With Earlier, me, bro, I, gotta, I appreciate it, Giga. You want to start over? With this brilliant confrontation, the detective oh yeah, successfully like convinced Isaac to start again with his story. Just like in Saber's interview, he already gave his version of events before this, so this any mistakes cooked. he makes now will seal his fate. Start at the very beginning. How did you end up there? I ended up because Saber wanted to go, and I told her that I would go with him. And so we ended up going. Mm -hmm. We've never got along, me and her brother. Mm -hmm. And, of course, her brother's friends aren't going to like me if he don't like me. Right. But he said that he was going to be cool, calm, and collected. I said that I would do the same. And right. I was until everything blew up. And once everything blows up, then I just blow up and I end up blacking out. How much cocaine did you do last night? I didn't do any. I know there was cocaine there. I've yeah, already but, found the cocaine. Yo, where are we getting all these substances from? Wait, what? Nobody says shit about cocaine. Wait, where did that come from? What? And once everything blows up, this then I so just many blow missing up. Ass, like, parts out. of the story. How much cocaine did you do last night? Where did this come from? I didn't do any. I know there was cocaine there. I have yeah, already found the cocaine. I didn't do any. Did you smoke weed? No. How much did you drink last night? It was night? doing coke? Um, I think I drank a 12 pack of Miller. Uh, I took a couple shots of Hennessy. Oh, he was and gone. And a bottle of uh, green. Oh, he was gone. Uh, it's like green sour apple snops. Huh. There was like a half bottle of that. <laughs> he was <Okay>. gone. <laughs> so you drank a lot of alcohol, knowing that you have an explosive personality gone. when you're drunk. Okay. Was there some jealousy issues at this party last night? Yeah, a little bit. What happened? Um, well, it's just. Her brother's friend, well, her friend and her brother's friend, uh, Trey. I've always not liked him because she sits there and says it's always like a brother, but then she got mad at me one time. And so. Oh, so Trey is the nigga she says you don't gotta worry about. Yeah, they be fucking. Yeah, they be fucking. She said he's like a brother. Yeah, they be fucking. Yeah, any t any all those times that you be arguing with your bitch, who you think she go and talk about it with? Trey. Yeah, they be fucking. Her friend and her I would be tight too, gay. I would be tight too. Yeah, they definitely fucking. I've always not liked him because she sits there and says it's always like a brother, but then she got mad at me one time and said, "Oh, well, Trey's so hot, I'll just go fuck him." Oh yeah, she was being for so, real too. That's where I don't really trust she was him being anymore. For real too. And, it's uh, all Trey's fault. Yeah, we should get Trey in this bitch. So. Uh, when so, came, that's kind of where I get jealous. Okay. So, Sabra is talking to Trey, right? Where are they together? Oh, they're in Hot Tub. Okay. Mm -hmm. And she starts. You left them alone in the hot tub? 
shit, I would be jealous too, gang. I'm like, well, I would be tight, bro. I would be tight too, my nigga. I would be tight too. I'm gonna panic them attack. Alone in the hot tub. Because I would why? be tight too. Bro. I honestly thought I was gonna be mad. If Sabre had panic attacks I'm just thinking lie. that Isaac was going to be mad at her, one can question exactly how much abuse she dealt with to behave like this. Worse yet is the fact that Sabra still believed Isaac to be a saint, going as far as to cover up his murder. Yeah, that's crazy. So a scuffle ensues, and during this scuffle, Sabra tries to break it up, right? Okay. And what happens to Sabra as she's trying to break this up? As she says she got trampled. Who comes to run to her aid? I have no clue. Okay. So, fair to say right. that you probably blacked out or there's bits and pieces missing here? Yeah. So Dalton comes running over because his sister's now on the ground and she has this tattoo that says my brother's keeper and they're they're close, right? right? Okay. And he is screaming at you guys to knock the shit off because his sister's now on the ground and Sabra is having some type of panic attack, okay. right? She goes to get in the car and she's screaming at you at this point, right? Do you remember this? No. Okay. Is that when we start fighting on the hill? Uh-huh. And what happens on that hill? Um, on the hill that's where I got pushed down. Do you have injuries that would yeah. corroborate you saying you got pushed down? The scrapes on your side? Yeah, I have scrapes all over my side, and I have a big knot right here where I got hit. Okay. Okay. So you get pushed down this hill, and then what? I mean... Then I think we kept on going at it. Who's we? Because we have about 20 or 22 people now that have been Ew. at this cabin. How I don't even know their names. The I saw the fuck? video. Somebody clearly shoved you in the front. How many people uh, are here? Which started the, you know, the scuffle. Yeah, this is about the only part I remember is getting pushed. And then kind of gone from there until I got in my car. And when you get in your car, what happens? That's where I think I grabbed the knife. Yeah, he's Bro, I want to know what Sabra handed her the, or handed him though like what she put in his front seat self-defense see i was thinking he was gonna do that because technically he could say it was self-defense but it gets to a point like he stabbed the nigga like six times that's not self-defense at that point like if he just stabbed him once or twice you could say self-defense but when you stab a nigga like six times six eight times like it's like i right, bro <laughs> like nigga, i think you've defended yourself enough now like come on bro like, back the fuck up. I'll tell you that I like, have it gets a footprint to a point. that tells and, me Yeah, that and this nigga was caught in 4K. Do you remember any of that? Of the, the whole thing. Which, okay. but, like I said, if literally, if he just stabbed the nigga, like, once or twice, he could have said this whole thing was self-defense. That's all he, because the whole time, he was not in the wrong until he stabbed the nigga, like, eight times. Then that's when it was like, I right, bro, like, you're wild. All he had to do was, like, either just, like, threaten him with the knife or, like, stab him once. He would have been good. He'd be like, no, I was just self-defense. They were hitting, they were jump, trying to jump me, fighting me, blah, 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 blah. So I stabbed them to, to get them off of me, and then we left. He would have been good. He could have said, it was self-defense. I was just trying to protect myself. Bam. But nope. Where's Sabra? It's crazy. She was just sitting in the car. Is she got a car at any point? I don't think so. Is she paying attention to what you're doing there, or is she preoccupied with something? I think she was watching TikToks on her phone. Watching TikToks on her phone, knowing her boyfriend he just stabbed. Was him. watching TikToks while you were standing. Normal people? behavior, right? <laughs> what? What? I mean, hey, you went home and took it a nap. Go big or go like, home. It was just another day in the park for you. I was too drunk and then really. really I mean, he did say he blacked home. out, Who but not too drunk to drive. Like, not too drunk to dispose of the murder weapon. That is true. You did do not a lot of stuff for you to, to be try and cover up your tracks. Drunk. Did you know his name was Charlie? Yeah. You never met Charlie before that, did you? So, you grabbed Charlie by the neck, and you didn't stab Charlie two times. You stabbed Charlie six times. Yeah, six times. The side of his neck. Like, like if it was twice, you could have just said it was self-defense six times? And then in the neck? That's basically, like, the first stab you went for the kill, my nigga. So never mind, you couldn't even say it was self-defense. First stab, nigga, went for the kill! Are we serious? Here on his face. The neck? Twice his in his face? side. Once in his Bro, back. And like, somewhere in between his head okay. and his neck. And you left. Oh my god. You left Charlie to lay there and bleed out on the ground. 
Charlie didn't die right away. Yo, but Charlie. Charlie, Charlie he died. He coded out Damn. in a trauma bay. He made it in an airplane to a hospital in Columbus. Damn. Made it through the surgery, and then he could put his heart gave out. Damn. Harvey and you know Charlie, what? Bro. His kid isn't the only one left without a dad. Because Draco and Waylon aren't going to have their dad either. They're not going to have their mom either. She went to jail today. What's she going to do? Yeah, wait, why? Complicity to murder. Because she knew, and she didn't do anything about it. And Maybe. I turned your... I mean... She didn't... She said she didn't know, though. I'm just trying to give her a benefit of doubt. I'm trying to help her out, at least. Because she don't seem like an evil person. Like, And she be getting abused. Like, I'm trying to help the mom out, at least. Like, fuck this nigga. He named his kid Draco. He deserves his life. But, like... At least let's help the mom. Out. The kids over to the state earlier this afternoon. Like because she, of she said she didn't know she got trampled to the well. ground. She need glasses, so she probably couldn't even see for real. She might be on some Velma shit. She got pushed to the ground, lost her glasses. Like she said she didn't even see a nigga get stabbed in the first place. And then you hear somebody got stabbed, you might not think like, oh, he's dead. You might just think like, oh, you just you stabbed somebody. Like, yeah, that's crazy. But like, I don't mean you killed. Uh, I, feel like, I feel like we get. Yo, free the moms, so, bro. Free the moms. They're not gonna have a mother or a father. Fuck this nigga, though. But the mom, Does free, that free her, bro. For you? She ain't even do nothing. Put some things into perspective. Bet you weren't thinking about that when you threw the knife. All right, Isaac, you're gonna stand up, put your hands behind your back. At this time, you're under arrest for murder. Yo, murder is such a crazy thing. You know how crazy you gotta be At to this point, somebody? Isaac has nothing more to say, and the body cam concludes like shortly after. With so life. much evidence stacked against him and his girlfriend, the two were placed into custody as they awaited their trial. A year later, Damn. on August 26th, 2024, oh, Sabre was... Flag pled guilty to obstructing justice. This is a fifth degree felony that comes with a maximum of 12 months in prison and a 2005. Oh, that's, not, that's not even that bad. That's not even that bad. She was, okay, that is it, yeah, okay. I was about to say, how was she doing that? But she wasn't lying and shit, so yeah. That's not even that bad, though. She only in that motherfucker for a year. A year is a long time in jail, though. A year and $2,500 fine, damn. $500 fine. The time as in jail for wasn't Isaac enough? Pence, he was oh, convicted yeah, of close. one count of murder, two counts of felonious assault, and damn. one count of tampering with evidence. God, A damn. month later, on September 25th, he Don't was finally off. sentenced to 18 years to life in prison, okay. where he will not see the light of day for a long, long I time. I was about to say, do not piss me off, bro. This nigga better get a, a charge. Yo. I'm not gonna lie. Free Sabra, bruh. She ain't do shit. She was trying to protect... Okay, well, the lying part, she did lie and shit. But, like, she was just trying to protect her man who she should not have been trying to protect. But she was just trying to protect him. Like, man, who cares? Like, people lie to the cops every day. Niggas lie to the cops every day, bruh. Who cares? I mean, nah, this wasn't a murder case, though. This was a murder case, though. Nah, free, give her like, give her like four months. Like, I think she'll learn her, give her one. I'm like, like, she, she'll learn her lesson, bro. She'll be aight. But that other nigga, Isaac, though, yeah, fuck Isaac, bro. We Isaac K. Yeah, fuck that nigga. And rip Charlie, bro.